The echo of Jenna's sultry laughter reverberated through the kitchen, shattering the illusion of the perfect family life I thought I had. My hand trembled as I clutched the dish towel, stunned into silence by the unmistakable sound of her voice mingling with my husband's familiar tones. Ethan, you're such a tease, Jenna purred, her words dripping with innuendo. My heart pounded in my ears as I crept closer to the slightly ajar back door, how desperate for an explanation that didn't involve the unthinkable. But the voices grew clearer, confirming my worst fears. We can't keep doing this, Ethan murmured, his tone laced with guilt. Lila might find out. Don't worry, baby, Jenna cooed. She's so wrapped up in her work and the kids, she'll never suspect a thing. A strangled sob caught in my throat as the truth slammed into me like a wrecking ball. My husband, my supposed partner in this life, was having an affair with our neighbor, my friend Jenna. Anger surged through me, burning away the initial shock and disbelief. How could he? After nearly two decades of marriage, countless sacrifices and unwavering devotion, this was how he repaid me? I stormed through the back door, the towel still clenched in my fist. You lying, deceitful bastard! Ethan and Jenna sprang apart, their faces etched with horror and shame. Jenna's perfectly styled hair was disheveled, and Ethan's shirt was halfway unbuttoned, leaving no doubt as to their activities. Lila, I, we, Ethan stammered, his eyes wide with panic. Save it! I spat, fury blazing in my veins. How could you do this to me, to our family? Jenna's expression twisted into a sneer. Don't act so innocent, Lila. You were never enough for him. The sting of her words was a mere pinprick compared to the anguish of Ethan's betrayal. I turned to him, searching for a flicker of remorse, a shred of the man I had loved and trusted implicitly. But his gaze skittered away, unable to meet mine. In that moment I realized the man I thought I knew was gone, replaced by a stranger capable of the cruelest deception. "'Get out!' I whispered, my voice trembling with barely contained rage. "'Both of you, get out of my house!' Jenna shrugged nonchalantly and sauntered out, leaving a trail of her signature perfume in her wake." Ethan lingered, his mouth opening and closing like a fish gasping for air. Lila, please, let me explain. Explain what? I shot back, my composure cracking. How you threw away our marriage, our family, for some tawdry fling with that, that... I couldn't even bring myself to say her name. Ethan flinched as if I had struck him. It's not like that. I love you, Lila. You have to believe me. His words were like acid on an open wound. I wanted nothing more than to hurl every accusation lot every ounce of pain and rage at him. But the sight of my daughters, frozen in the doorway with horror etched on their faces, stopped me in my tracks. In that moment, I knew I had to be strong for them. I couldn't let this betrayal shatter us completely. Just go, I said, my voice thick with unshed tears. We'll discuss this later. As Ethan slunk out, his shoulders slumped in defeat, I gathered my daughters in my arms, drawing strength from their embrace. The road ahead would be long and arduous, but we would face it together, whatever came our way. The perfect family facade had shattered, but in its wake a newfound resilience was forged, one that would see us through the storm and into the light of a new beginning. In the days that followed, a suffocating silence descended upon our once vibrant home. Ethan's presence lingered like a dark cloud, casting a pall over every room, every memory we had built together. At the dinner table, his usual spot remained hauntingly empty, a constant reminder of the gaping void his betrayal had carved into our lives. Briar and Cleo picked at their food, their eyes downcast, unable to meet my gaze. The tension was palpable, a living, breathing entity that threatened to choke us all. Mom? Briar's voice was barely above a whisper. What's going to happen now? I forced a tight smile, willing strength into my words. We'll get through this, sweetheart, as a family. Cleo snorted derisively. Some family. Dad's off screwing that skank while we're left to pick up the pieces. Her harsh words sliced through the air, but I couldn't bring myself to reprimand her. The anger simmering beneath her teenage bravado was all too familiar. Your sister's right, I said, my voice heavy with resignation. Your father has made his choices, and now we must make ours. Ethan chose that moment to slink into the kitchen, his movements furtive as if he were a trespasser in his own home. His gaze flickered towards the empty chair, and a flash of something, regret, perhaps, flickered across his features. Girls, he began, his voice strained. I know you're angry, but please, let me explain. 
Explain what? Cleo cut him off, her eyes blazing with fury. How you threw away eighteen years of marriage for a cheap fling with Mom's so-called friend. Ethan recoiled as if struck. It's not like that, Cleo. I never meant to hurt any of you. Well, you did, Briar chimed in, her voice trembling with barely contained emotion. You hurt all of us, Dad. How could you? The weight of their accusations seemed to crush Ethan, and for a moment I almost felt sorry for him. Almost. I'm sorry, he whispered, his shoulders slumping in defeat. I'm so, so sorry. Sorry. The word hung in the air, hollow and inadequate, a feeble attempt to bandage the gaping wounds he had inflicted upon our family. In that moment something inside me hardened, a resolve forged in the fires of his betrayal. Sorry wasn't enough, not by a long shot. Sorry doesn't cut it, Ethan, I said, my voice a low, dangerous growl. Not after what you've done. His head snapped up, his eyes widening at the steel in my tone. Lila, please, let's talk about this. Talk? I laughed bitterly. What's there to talk about? You made your choices, and now you have to face the consequences. Briar and Cleo exchanged a look, their faces mirroring my determination. We were done talking, done with empty apologies and hollow promises. It was time for action. Get out, I said, each word a hammer blow. Pack your things and get out of our house. Ethan opened his mouth to protest, but one look from me silenced him. He knew better than to argue, not when our united front left no room for negotiation. As he trudged up the stairs, his footsteps heavy with resignation, I turned to my daughters, my allies in this war. It's going to get ugly, I warned them. But we're in this together, no matter what. Their resolute nods filled me with a fierce sense of pride. We were Morrison women, strong and unbreakable, and we would weather this storm, come what may. The unraveling had begun, but we would emerge from the wreckage— forged anew and tempered by the flames of Ethan's betrayal. The echo of the slamming door still reverberated in my ears as Ethan's car peeled out of the driveway, leaving a cloud of dust in its wake. A sense of finality hung in the air, a chapter closing with all the grace of a wrecking ball. Well, he's gone, Cleo muttered, her arms folded across her chest. Now what? I turned to my daughters, their faces etched with a mix of anger and uncertainty. In that moment, they looked so young, so vulnerable, a harsh reminder of the innocence Ethan's actions had shattered. Now, I said, my voice steely with resolve, we fight. Briar's eyes widened. Fight? As in against Dad? Precisely. I placed a hand on each of their shoulders, drawing them closer. What he did was unforgivable, and we can't let him get away with it. Cleo's lips curved into a grim smile. You mean like, get revenge? The word hung in the air, heavy with implications. Revenge, a dish best served cold, or so they say. But in that moment, with the sting of Ethan's betrayal still fresh, the thought of retaliation was intoxicating. Not just revenge, I said, my voice low and purposeful. Justice. He needs to face the consequences of his actions, and we're going to make sure he does. Briar worried her lower lip, a flicker of doubt passing over her features. But how? It's not like we can just waltz into court and demand he pays for cheating on you. A slow smile spread across my face. Maybe not in a court of law, but the court of public opinion? That's a different story. Understanding dawned in Cleo's eyes. You want to expose him, ruin his reputation, make him a pariah. Exactly. I squeezed their shoulders, a surge of pride welling up within me. He thought he could have his cake and eat it, too, carrying on this sordid affair right under our noses. Well, it's time we showed him just how wrong he was. Briar's expression hardened her jaw set in determination. Count me in, that bastard deserves everything that's coming to him. Cleo nodded vehemently. Me too. I'm sick of being the poor little daughters of the cheating scumbag. It's time we took control of the narrative. A warmth bloomed in my chest, a fierce pride in these two incredible young women who had emerged from the wreckage of our broken family, tempered by the fires of betrayal. Together, we would be unstoppable. Then it settled. I said, my voice ringing with conviction. We're going to take that son of a bitch down, and we're going to make sure the whole world knows exactly what kind of man Ethan Morrison really is. Briar's brow furrowed. But how? It's not like we can just blast it all over social media without proof. A slow predatory grin spread across my face. Leave that to me. I know just where to start. As my daughters exchanged a look of grim determination, I felt a surge of power coursing through my veins. 
Ethan had made a grave mistake in underestimating us. A mistake he would soon come to regret. The game was on, and we were playing for keeps. The rapid staccato of Skylar's fingers dancing across the keyboard filled the tense silence of the living room. Briar's tech-savvy friend had proven to be a valuable ally in our quest for vengeance against Ethan. So let me get this straight, Skylar said, his brow furrowed in concentration. You want to catch your cheating ex-husband red-handed with the neighbor lady? I nodded grimly. Exactly. And we need ironclad proof, video, audio, the whole nine yards. Cleo leaned forward, her eyes glinting with determination. We can't let that scumbag wriggle his way out of this. He needs to face the consequences, big time. Skylar's fingers flew across the keyboard, and he let out a low whistle. Damn, your dad's been a busy boy. Looks like he and this Jenna chick have been meeting up at all sorts of sketchy motels and rendezvous spots. Bile rose in my throat at the mental image, but I forced it down. This wasn't the time for weakness. We needed to stay focused, stay sharp. Can you track their movements? Figure out where they'll be next? I asked, my voice gritty with barely contained fury. Skylar's lips curved into a wolfish grin. Baby, I can do way more than that. With the right tech, we can plant bugs, set up hidden cameras. Hell, we could even livestream the whole thing if you wanted. Briar's eyes widened. Livestream? As in, broadcast it for the whole world to see? Hell yeah, Skylar crowed, his excitement palpable. Can you imagine the look on your dad's face when he realizes his dirty little secret is being aired out for everyone to see? A delicious shiver of anticipation rippled through me at the thought. Ethan had always been so concerned with maintaining his pristine reputation, his carefully cultivated image of the perfect husband and father. To have that all come crashing down, to be exposed as the lying, cheating scumbag he truly was, it would be the ultimate humiliation. Do it, I said, my voice a low growl. Set it up however you need to, but make sure we get every sordid detail on camera. Cleo's lips curved into a feral grin and make sure it's impossible for them to delete or destroy the evidence. We want that shit preserved for all eternity. Skylar's fingers flew across the keyboard, a manic gleam in his eyes. Oh, don't you worry about that. By the time I'm done, your dad and his side piece will be the main attraction on every social media platform known to man. A part of me recoiled at the thought of such a public spectacle, but the deeper, darker part the part that had been scorned and betrayed by the man I had once loved, reveled in it. Ethan deserved to be exposed, to be held accountable for the pain and humiliation he had inflicted upon our family. Make it happen, I said, my voice steely with resolve. And Skylar? He glanced up, his expression one of eager anticipation. Thank you, I said, my words heavy with gratitude, for helping us make that son of a bitch pay. Skylar's grin widened, wolfish and predatory. Oh, believe me, it's my genuine pleasure. As he turned back to his laptop, the rapid-fire clacking of keys filling the air once more, I exchanged a look with my daughters. Our eyes burned with a shared determination, a fierce resolve that had been forged in the crucible of Ethan's betrayal. The plan was in motion, and there would be no turning back. Ethan Morrison was about to learn a hard lesson, one that would shake the very foundations of his carefully constructed life and we would be there, front and center, to watch it all come crashing down around him. The gentle tinkling of ice cubes against glass accompanied the sultry laughter that drifted across the backyard. I paused, my hand hovering over the patio door, steeling myself for the inevitable confrontation. Cole Russell, Jenna's hapless husband, lounged in a deck chair, a beer dangling from his fingers. His eyes were glazed, the telltale sign of one too many drinks on a sweltering summer afternoon perfect. I pasted on my most disarming smile and pushed open the door, trying to ignore the way Cole's gaze raked over me in a decidedly lecherous manner. Hey there, Lila, he slurred, his words slightly garbled. Care to join me for a cold one? I forced a light laugh, waving away his offer. No thanks, Cole. I actually came over to talk to you about something. His brow furrowed, this a flicker of unease passing over his features. Oh, what's up? Lowering myself into the chair beside him, I leaned in conspiratorially. It's about Jenna. Cole stiffened, his grip tightening around the beer bottle. What about her? I let out a weary sigh, injecting just the right amount of reluctance into my tone. Look, I don't mean to overstep, but I've noticed some things lately. 
things that concern me. His eyes narrowed, a defensive edge creeping into his voice. What kind of things? Hesitating, as if weighing my words carefully, I pressed on. It's just... Jenna's been acting strange, you know? Staying out late, being secretive with her phone, I'm worried she might be... I trailed off, letting the implication hang in the air. Cole's jaw tightened, a muscle twitching in his cheek. You think she's cheating on me? It wasn't a question, but I treated it as one, shaking my head slowly. I don't know, Cole. I really don't. But you have to admit, the signs aren't exactly encouraging. He scoffed, a brittle, forced sound. Jenna would never do that. We've been together for years, and she loves me. Maybe, I allowed, my voice gentle placating. But sometimes even the people we think we know best can surprise us. Planting the seeds of doubt, letting them take root in his mind, it was a delicate dance, one that required finesse and subtlety. Too heavy-handed and he would recoil, his defenses shooting up. Look, I said, leaning back in my chair. I'm probably just being paranoid. Jenna's my friend, and I care about her, about both of you. I just don't want to see either of you get hurt, you know? Cole's expression softened, the hard edges of suspicion melting away. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Thanks for looking out, Lila. I offered him a wan smile, rising to my feet. Anytime, Cole. I'll let you get back to your beer. As I retreated back into the house, I could feel his gaze boring into my back, the seeds I had planted taking root in his mind. Jenna's indiscretions would come to light soon enough, and when they did, Cole would be left reeling, questioning everything he thought he knew. And in that moment of vulnerability, of shattered trust and broken vows, I would be there, ready to offer a sympathetic ear and a shoulder to cry on. After all, what were friends for? The thought brought a twisted smile to my lips as I closed the patio door behind me. The gears were in motion, the dominoes slowly toppling one by one. Ethan and Jenna had made their bed, weaving a tangled web of lies and deception. Now it was time for them to lie in it, to face the consequences of their actions head-on, and I would be there, watching it all unfold, savoring every moment of their downfall. Revenge, it seemed, was a dish best served cold, with a generous helping of schadenfreude on the side. The summer air was thick with the scent of grilled burgers and laughter, a cacophony of voices mingling with the sizzle of hot dogs on the grill. The annual neighborhood block party was in full swing, a celebration of community and camaraderie. But as I surveyed the festive scene, a plastic smile plastered on my face, my mind was focused on one thing and one thing only. Vengeance. Skylar's voice crackled in my earpiece, a hushed whisper amidst the revelry. They're here. Get ready. My gaze zeroed in on Ethan and Jenna, strolling through the crowd hand in hand, their body language practically oozing intimacy. Bile rose in my throat at the sight, but I forced it down, channeling my rage into steely determination. I see them, I murmured, my fingers tightening around the slim remote in my pocket. Everyone in position? Affirmative, Skylar confirmed. We're locked, loaded, and ready to rock. Briar and Cleo flanked me, their expressions grim masks of resolve. We had planned for this moment, meticulously orchestrating every detail to ensure maximum impact. Ethan leaned in his lips brushing against Jenna's ear as he whispered something, no doubt lascivious and obscene. My stomach churned, but I refused to let the sickening display deter me. Not this time. With a deep breath, I thumbed the remote, setting our plan in motion. A deafening boom echoed through the park, cutting through the jovial chatter like a gunshot. Heads swiveled in confusion as the massive screen flickered to life, bathing the crowd in an eerie, flickering glow. And then— the video began to play. A collective gasp rippled through the gathered masses as the unmistakable figures of Ethan and Jenna appeared on the screen, tangled in a passionate embrace. Their hands roamed over each other's bodies, greedy and shameless, leaving no doubt as to the nature of their illicit tryst. "'Oh, my God!' a voice murmured, horror and disbelief mingling in equal measure. Ethan froze, his eyes widening in abject terror as he took in the scene unfolding around him. Jenna, too, stood rooted to the spot, her mouth hanging open in a comical expression of shock. What the hell is this? Cole's voice thundered, slicing through the stunned silence like a knife. All eyes turned towards him, taking in his flushed face and trembling hands. Realization dawned in his expression, swiftly giving way to a rage so palpable it was almost a living, breathing thing. You lying whore, 
he spat, rounding on Jenna with bald fists. How could you? Jenna opened her mouth, but no words came out, her eyes darting wildly from the screen to Cole's enraged visage. Ethan, ever the coward, chose that moment to slink away, his shoulders hunched in an effort to make himself as small and unobtrusive as possible. But I wasn't about to let him off that easily. "'Going somewhere, dear husband,' I called out, my voice dripping with scathing derision. He froze, his head whipping around to face me, his expression a mask of abject terror and shame. Lila, he croaked, his voice barely audible over the furious whispers that had begun to rip ripple through the crowd. "'I—I I can explain.' A bitter bark of laughter escaped my lips. Explain what, Ethan? How you've been lying to me, to our family for God knows how long, how you've been carrying on a sordid affair with this. I gestured towards Jenna with a contemptuous sneer. This tramp right under our noses? Jenna's face contorted in rage, but before she could open her mouth Cole was upon her, his fists bunched in the fabric of her shirt. You disgust me, he snarled, flecks of spittle flying from his lips. How could you do this to me, to our marriage? As the two descended into a vicious exchange of recriminations and accusations, I turned my attention back to Ethan, savoring the utter devastation etched into his features. You brought this on yourself, Ethan, I said, my voice low and laced with contempt. You made your choices, and now you have to live with the consequences. His eyes darted towards the screen, where the video continued to play on a sickening loop, broadcasting his indiscretions for all to see. Please, he rasped, a sheen of sweat beating on his brow. Lila, I'm begging you. But I was done listening to his pathetic pleas, done with the lies and the deception that had poisoned our marriage for far too long. Turning on my heel, I strode away, my daughters falling into step beside me. We had achieved what we set out to do, to expose Ethan and Jenna for the faithless, deceitful creatures they truly were. As the sound of their anguished cries faded into the distance, I felt a sense of grim satisfaction settle over me. The battle had been won, but the war was far from over. Ethan and Jenna had sown the seeds of their own destruction, and now they would reap the bitter harvest they had cultivated through their selfish actions. And we, the wronged and the betrayed, would be there to watch it all unfold, savoring every delicious moment of their downfall. The aftermath of our public exposure was like a wildfire, consuming everything in its wake with ruthless, unbridled intensity. Whispers and sidelong glances trailed us wherever we went, a constant reminder of the inferno we had stoked. Ethan, predictably, had gone into full-blown damage control mode, bombarding me with texts and voicemails that alternated between groveling pleas for forgiveness and desperate attempts to salvage his rapidly crumbling reputation. Lila, please, his latest message croaked, his voice thick with barely contained anguish. Let me explain. It wasn't what it looked like, I swear. I snorted derisively, jabbing the delete button with perhaps more force than necessary. Lies, all of it, feeble attempts to rewrite the narrative to absolve himself of the guilt and shame that now clung to him like a noxious cloud. Was that dear old dad again? Cleo sneered, her lip curled in a mocking facsimile of a smile. I nodded, tossing my phone aside with a weary sigh. He just doesn't know when to quit, does he? Briar shook her head, her expression a mix of disgust and pity. I can't believe he's still trying to spin this, to make himself out to be the victim. That's just how scumbags like him operate, Cleo spat, her eyes blazing with contempt. They lie and they manipulate, and when they get caught they play the sympathy card to try and weasel their way out of it. A harsh buzzing cut through the tense silence, and I glanced down to see Jenna's name flashing across the screen. With a sardonic quirk of my brow, I accepted the call, putting it on speaker. Well, well, if it isn't the neighborhood Jezebel, I drawled, unable to resist the barb. To what do we owe the pleasure? Cut the crap, Lila, Jenna snarled, her voice trembling with barely contained fury. You and your brats have gone too far this time. Cleo bristled, her fists clenching at her sides. "'Who are you calling a brat, you home-wrecking skank?' A harsh, humorless laugh crackled through the speaker. "'Oh, please, like you're one to talk about wrecking homes, you little witch.' "'That's enough,' I barked, my own temper flaring in the face of Jenna's vitriol. "'You've got a hell of a nerve calling us out after what you've done.' "'What I've done?' Jenna scoffed, her voice dripping with derision. "'Lila,' 
You and your twisted little coven are the ones who orchestrated this whole sick parade. Did you really think you could get away with it? I felt a surge of grim satisfaction at the fear that laced her words, the realization that her world was crumbling around her. We're not the ones who betrayed our families, our vows, I said, my voice low and laced with contempt. That was all you and Ethan, drunk on your own self-indulgence and entitlement. There was a beat of stunned silence, and for a moment I thought the call had dropped. But then Jenna's voice sliced through the tension, trembling with barely restrained rage. You're going to regret this, Lila, she hissed, the threat all too palpable. Mark my words, you and your little brats are going to pay for what you've done. The line went dead, but her ominous promise hung in the air, a chilling reminder that this battle was far from over. Briar and Cleo exchanged a wary glance, their bravado momentarily shaken by the venom in Jenna's words. But I remained unmoved, a grim determination settling over me like a mantle. Let her make her threats, I said, my voice steely with resolve. We knew this wasn't going to be easy, that they'd fight back tooth and nail to try and regain control of the narrative. Cleo's expression hardened, her earlier anger reigniting. Well, they can try all they want, but we're not backing down, not now, not ever. Briar nodded, her jaw set in grim determination. They made their bed, and now they can lie in it. We're just making sure they face the consequences of their actions once and for all. A swell of pride washed over me as I looked at my daughters, their strength and resilience shining through like beacons in the gathering storm. We had come too far, sacrificed too much to let the likes of Ethan and Jenna cow us into submission. You're right, I said, my voice ringing with conviction. This is far from over, but we're in it for the long haul. No more running, no more hiding. It's time to fight. As their resolute nods echoed my sentiments, I felt a surge of fierce determination coursing through my veins. Ethan and Jenna had awoken a fire within us, a blaze of righteous fury that would consume them utterly if they dared to stand in our way. The battle lines had been drawn, and we would emerge victorious, no matter the cost. The sharp rap of the gavel echoed through the courtroom, a percussive punctuation to the drama that had unfolded over the past few months. Ethan's grimace was barely concealed, a fleeting glimpse of the anguish that now shadowed his every move. The court has reviewed the evidence presented and finds in favor of the plaintiff, Miss Lila Morrison, the judge intoned, his gaze sweeping over the assembled parties with a stern finality. Full custody of the minor children is hereby granted, with Mr. Ethan Morrison subject to supervised visitation rights and ordered to pay child support in accordance with state guidelines. A brittle silence hung in the air, broken only by the soft sobs that escaped Ethan's lips. Jenna, seated beside him, patted his arm with a tenderness that seemed almost mocking in its hollow insincerity. I, on the other hand, felt nothing but a grim sense of vindication, the hard-won spoils of a bitter battle finally within my grasp. As we rose to leave the courtroom, Ethan's haunted gaze found mine, his eyes pleading for some shred of mercy or understanding. But I met his stare with an impassive mask, refusing to grant him even the smallest concession. Lila, please, he rasped, his voice cracking with desperate anguish. The girls, they need their father. A bitter bark of laughter escaped my lips. Need their father? Or need the man who shattered their lives with his selfish actions? Ethan flinched as if struck, but I pressed on, relentless in my scathing condemnation. You forfeited the right to call yourself their father the moment you decided your tawdry fling with Jenna was more important than your own family. I gestured towards the stunned woman at his side, my lip curling in contempt. You two can play house all you want, but mark my words, my daughters will never again be collateral damage in your sordid games. Briar and Cleo, standing resolute at my side, nodded in grim affirmation. The months of turmoil and anguish had forged them into warriors, tempered by the flames of betrayal and hardened by the harsh realities we had faced. Jenna, never one to shy away from confrontation, stepped forward, her eyes blazing with indignant fury. "'You think you've won, don't you?' She spat, her words laced with venom. "'That by taking Ethan's kids away you've somehow come out on top in all this?' I met her vitriol with a cold, hollow laugh. "'One? Jenna?' There are no winners here, only survivors. 
You and Ethan made sure of that when you decided to put your sordid desires above everything else. Her face contorted in rage, but before she could unleash another torrent of vitriol, Cleo stepped forward, her expression one of utter disdain. Just save it, Jenna, she bit out, her voice dripping with scorn. We're done listening to your lies and excuses. You and Dad made your bed, and now you can lie in it, together, if that's what you really want. Briar nodded, her jaw set in grim determination. We're moving on, starting over, without the constant cloud of betrayal hanging over us. You two. She trailed off, her lip curling in disgust as she raked her gaze over them. Well, you can just stay mired in the mess you've created. A heavy silence descended, punctuated only by the soft ticking of the courtroom clock. Ethan and Jenna for once seemed at a loss for words, their bravado deflated in the face of our united front. As we turned to leave, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders, a burden finally shed after months of anguish and turmoil. The road ahead would be long and arduous, but we would face it together, unbowed and unbroken. Let's go home, girls, I said, my voice ringing with a strength and conviction I hadn't felt in far too long. Briar and Cleo fell into step beside me, their shoulders squared and their heads held high. We had weathered the storm, emerged from the wreckage of our shattered lives forged anew, stronger, wiser, and more resilient than ever before. The future stretched out before us, a blank canvas waiting to be painted with the vibrant hues of our choosing. And as we strode forth, the echoes of our past fading into the distance, I knew that whatever lay ahead, we would face it head on unburdened by the weight of Ethan's betrayal. A new chapter was beginning, one written on our terms and infused with the hard-won lessons of our trials. We were Morrison women, fierce and unbreakable, and the world had best take heed, for we would never again be victims but victors, masters of our own destinies, unshackled and unafraid.